I dug this out the loft this morning. Don't ask me why I've kept a box at Old World for 20 odd years. I'm even amazed I knew where it was. But I woke up in the middle of the night and I've had this idea so well. Here we are. It belonged to my nana. And when she passed away, my auntie handed it to me cooing. Oh, you know how much you love to knit and she'd be dead chuffed if you would have it. I didn't actually have the heart to tell her. I've not done a stitch since I was 16. My nana was 92 when she passed away. 1906 she was born. Three kids, 14 grandchildren. Well, and that's for great-grandchildren. I gave up counting when there was enough to fill a football field. And she was not much older than what I am now. She was whisked away to a hospital. Everybody thought it was the end of the road. And she was given the last rights a lot. At the time, she would have been considered a ripe old age. She had had her three score years and ten, so the family had went and prepared for what was to come. So there we all were, sitting in the waiting room, and in walks the doctor, with the strangest look on his face. Said he hadn't seen such a miraculous recovery in all his career. <laughs> Two weeks later, she's out of hospital and well, it's like Nana on tour. She goes and visits each grandchild each week with her big bag of treats. And we all had to be in attendance or face the consequences. Mine were only young at the time. And the wonders that she would pull out of that bag were beyond description. Hats, mittens, snoods, cardigans, each in a different colour for each grandchild. Green for Ian, yellow for Jenna, and lilac for Katie and so on. I once told her that she didn't need to knit one for all of them. It must take up much of your day, I said Nana. But Nana just put her hands in mine and says, well, I don't know how much time I've got, hen. She says, and this is what it's all about. At the time, I thought she meant watching the Williams play. But in my dotage, I've come up with a different theory. I think that she was knitting all her hopes into each garment for each child. And that's why they were all in a different colour. And her time sat in the chair was her, giving out her blessings to each and every one. She got to watch them grow, and she remained the grand old matriarch that she deserved to be for another 20 years. And that's what gets me about the attitudes of some now, that somehow, once you reach a certain age, you're less viable, expendable even. Well, they know not of which this talk I come from. <laughs> I'm going to knit these all together and make myself the biggest shawl I can. Each colour for each different grandchild all mixed together. And I shall knit my hopes and dreams for all of them in every row. Patience, resilience, faith and love. It might take me to Christmas to do it, but well, my old nan, I can pull it out of the bag then, so can I. And whether we're together at Christmas or not, I will wake up that morning and I will wrap it round me. And I will run my fingers down every bump, remembering those that have come before and dreaming dreams for those who have yet to come. I'd better get started. <laughs>